Hello and welcome to another edition of Focus on Morris County. I'm Joe Garifo, Morris County Public Information Officer. Focus on Morris County is a program that's designed to keep us up to date on the actions that are being taken by the Morris County freeholders. And the show is also intended to make us all more aware of the many aspects of Morris County government. Now on this segment of the program, we are going to focus on the Morris County uh, Historic Preservation Program, uh, which is one part of the Morris County Preservation Trust. And here to tell us about both of those is my guest. He is Ray Chang. Ray is the director of the Preservation Trust here in Morris County. Ray, welcome to the program. Thanks, Joe. Give us an overview, if you will, of uh, Preservation Trust and the various areas that it covers. Sure. The Morris County Preservation Trust administers the County Open Space Farmland uh, Trust Fund Program that was established by the freeholders at the end of 1992. Uh, the trust fund helps municipalities and qualified nonprofit groups with their needs in open space, farmland, uh, historic sites preservation, uh, as well as most recently our flood mitigation uh, needs. Um, so that's part of the trust fund. Yeah, and that flood mitigation uh, program is um, really only about a year or so old, uh, unique program here in New Jersey that uh, other counties uh, in the state, as well as the state itself, uh, have been asking for information, maybe trying to pattern uh, a program of theirs after uh, our flood mitigation program. Also, the funds for the trust fund, they also go to the county MUA, as well as the Park Commission. For their so various, there are various projects, areas yeah. that the trust fund assists. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. where does the fund get its money? How is the fund funded? Yeah. You know, in '92, when the referendum was passed, um, the the referendum allowed for a, a tax, which would fund the trust fund uh, areas. And we should mention <coughs> that um, uh, when the freeholders established the program back in the early '90s, it was established because of the fact that Morris County voters. Uh, did approve overwhelmingly the uh, establishment of the uh, the Preservation Trust program. So now in, in, um, mm -hmm. in 2002, uh, because of the county's rich history, the freeholders amended the Preservation Trust uh, to include uh, acquisition and preservation of historic sites and historic resources. What percentage of this fund that we're talking about, Ray, actually goes toward historic preservation? Yes, the 2000, <coughs> excuse me, the 2002 referendum allowed for between an eighth and a quarter cent of the existing tax to go for historic preservation purposes. So in 2013, this year, in dollars and cents, how much money was actually allocated to this particular purpose. Yeah, this year we had approximately 2.7 million that were allocated to uh, different historic sites. Well, how many applications did you receive um, and how many projects were actually funded this year? Yeah, this year we received 28 applications in all. One was deemed ineligible, one was withdrew, went, went, uh, with, withdrawn, and the remaining 26 were at least partially funded. Okay. Now, so who, for historic preservation purposes, who's eligible to apply for funding? Yeah, a number of eligible entities. One are all of the municipalities mm -hmm. in Morris County. The other, uh, qualified nonprofit groups. These, they have to have a purpose in historic preservation. Uh, and also the County of Morris uh, are also eligible. When they're applying for funds, uh, I understand there are several different types of grants that an entity can apply for. Yes. What are they? Yeah, we, we have three different types of applications. Uh, one is the construction, which relates to all the bricks and mortar projects. Mm -hmm. um, we also have a preservation planning application that includes all of your plans and reports that uh, entities can prepare in order to get ready for the construction activity. Uh, we also have a construction document application, which are, include all the architectural drawings and specifications that's needed to get to a construction project. What will a grant not fund, if that's the 
proper way of asking that particular right. question. Uh, no, we, we, don't, uh, we don't fund, for example, reconstruction. And we also don't fund any administrative uh, or um, uh, um, costs, mm -hmm. as well as interpretive activities, uh, such as signs uh, or displays. Take us, Ray, uh, take us through the application process, if you will. What happens once an entity applies, and I assume they apply to the Preservation Trust, mm -hmm. what happens after an application is received? Yeah, we, re we prepare the applications for the review of a freeholder appointed review board. And for about a month's time, they would visit all of the sites, they would listen to uh, applicant uh, presentations, mm -hmm. And at the end, they will make their recommendations to the freeholders. Now, we're going to uh, show you uh, three or four examples of projects that were funded this year by the uh, Historic Preservation Trust Fund. The first one that I believe we're going to see is Willow Hall. Ray, what can you tell us about Willow Hall? Yes, this uh, Willow Hall in Morristown, it was constructed in 1848 uh, by George Vail, uh, who financed the perfection of the telegraph. Uh, at the Speedwell Ironworks across the street from Willow Hall. Uh, it's an example of a Gothic revival cottage, uh, likely based upon the pattern book architecture of Andrew Jackson Downing. And it's built of local uh, purple pudding stones, very obvious when you drive by and see. Uh, it's a contributing resource in the Morristown Multiple Resource Area, uh, National Register listed. Uh, it's also individually listed on the New Jersey Register of Historic Places. Uh, the grant is for 135 thousand and eighty dollars mm -hmm. and it'll assist with replacing the slate roof do you know uh, can you tell me who actually received the grant who was the, yes. uh, uh, who the, was the application, application submitted the by? recipient of the grant is the Passaic River Coalition and Willow Hall is in fact the headquarters of the group okay yes uh, another project that we're going to see that received funding in uh, 2013 is the uh, free public library in Rockaway Borough what can you tell us about this yes and uh, this is the, the Joseph Jackson House, uh, now the Rockaway Borough Free Public Library, uh, likely constructed between 1800 and 1829 by Stephen Jackson, who is a member of G uh, General George Washington's uh, bodyguard. Uh, the building is individually listed on the New Jersey and National Registers. Um, the grant is for $23,880, and it'll assist with completion of a preservation plan uh, that will lay out the future direction for preservation um, and this will cover the exterior envelope of the building to include code review, structural systems evaluation, as well as a paint analysis. Okay. Uh, this uh, project or resource, I guess, uh, this next one that we're going to see is an interesting one, at least uh, to me it is. It is a uh, fire truck and uh, if I have the name correctly, it is the Aarons or Aarons mm -hmm. Fox P4 Fire truck. Yes. What about this, Ray? Yeah, this is certainly unusual. Uh, most of our sites in the program are historic buildings right. and structures, but uh, this is a fire truck and in Madison, uh, originally purchased and donated to the borough of Madison in 1921 by Geraldine Rockefeller Dodge. Um, there are only three remaining examples of this model, uh, although nine were originally constructed. Um, in the fire truck, it represents significantly the transition in firefighting history from the bucket brigades to the continuous stream firefighting. And uh, there, I think people, many folks in Madison are very <laughs> proud of that. Uh, the fire truck is eligible for listing uh, on the New Jersey registers and the grant is for 75000 going toward acquisition of the fire truck. Um, with the borough providing the 50% match. Okay, and uh, the, uh, the, the final project that we're actually going to see today out of uh, all of those that were funded in 2013 is the Mount Kemble Home. What about this, Ray? Yeah, this is, <clears throat> this is in Marstown, uh, constructed circa 1826 uh, in the federal style and later was remodeled in the 1880 and expanded uh, in 1905. So that introduced different architectural elements, uh, such as Carpenter Gothic, Stick, and Colonial Revival elements. Uh, it was founded as the home for destitute women, and it remains a home for elderly ladies. Uh, the building is a contributing resource in the Morristown Historic District extension, and the grant is for $40,416 uh, that will assist with completion of a preservation plan. So that will include code review, a structural and systems evaluation.
Now, I, I believe for the, uh, for the Madison project, for the fire truck, you mentioned something about the borough of Madison actually um, matching the yes. grant. Is that a requirement? Does an entity that receives a historic preservation grant have to match the grant? Yes, there is a matching requirement. Um, for most projects, including our construction projects, the matching requirement is, is 20 percent. So the applicant comes up with a 20 percent match. Um, for for non-construction projects that are less than or to five th less than five thousand dollars, there is no match. So the county would pay okay. for the entire. Um, but but uh, for acquisition projects, it's fifty percent matching. Okay. Now, I, I'm curious, Ray. Since this program began, the historic preservation portion of uh, the preservation trust, how many sites? in how many towns throughout Morris County have received grants? Yeah, altogether, since the beginning of the program, we have funded 80 historic sites and resources uh, throughout 32 towns in the county. And I, uh, that's amazing. I think that just goes to further demonstrate the rich history that Morris County and uh, just about each one of the 39 towns has yes. uh, here in, in the county. Now, the staff of the Department of Planning and Development, you're a part of that staff. Um, are you and the staff available throughout the course of the year to assist uh, an entity or a, uh, a, a government with the application uh, to answer any of their questions? Mm -hmm. uh, do you folks help them in any way? Oh, definitely. And people can come to us with questions on the application. Uh, we also have a application workshop at the end of January uh, so that people can come and uh, know more about the program. Give us uh, some contact information, Ray. Uh, sure. Telephone number for the uh, Preservation Trust, and I know uh, you have a couple of websites too. Yes. Well, um, my email is uh, rchang.co.morris.nj.us, and our address uh, is the Morris County Preservation Trust at the Morris County Department of Planning and Development, 30 Schuyler Place, uh, P.O. Box 900. Morristown, New Jersey, 07963-0900. And our phone number, 973-829-8120. And uh, the websites that I mentioned, you can also get uh, more information from the uh, Planning and Development website, which is morrisplanning.org, and also from the Preservation Trust website, which is morrispreservation.org. Ray Chang, I want to thank you very much for being with us and uh, shedding some light on the uh, historic preservation aspect of the Morris County Preservation Trust. Now, if you have a question about Morris County government that you would like to have answered, you can call the Morris County Freeholders Office at 973-285-6010. And don't forget to visit the uh, county governments online, morriscountynj.gov. And uh, while you're there, why don't you uh, sign up for the county's electronic newsletter, which is Morris County Connections. Stay up to date with county government news. And uh, also, uh, when you're on the website, you can like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, uh, view past programs and other informational videos on YouTube. You can browse our document library on Scribd and check out pictures, photos from various county events on Flickr. I'm Joe Garifo. Thank you very much for being with us now. Don't go away, because we'll be right back. Are you pregnant, scared, or a new mother who can't care for your newborn? There's a safe haven in New Jersey. You or a friend can bring an infant to any hospital or police station and give up custody safely, legally, and anonymously. No questions asked. No shame. No blame. No names. Call 1-877-839-2339 or visit njsafehaven.org to learn more. Remember, New Jersey has a safe haven for unwanted infants. Brought to you by the New Jersey Department of Children and Families. Welcome back to Focus on Morris County. I'm Joe Garifo, and on this segment of the program, we are going to turn our attention to the Morris County Tourism Bureau, 6 Court Street in Morristown, with my guest, the Executive Director of the Tourism Bureau, Leslie Bensley. Leslie, welcome to the program. Thank you, Joe. Thank you for uh, for joining us. Now, give us an overview, if you will, of the Morris County Tourism Bureau, what its uh, mission is, 
and the kind of assistance that it provides. Well, we're a destination marketing organization, which actually our charge is to promote everything there is to see and do in Morris County. So, for example, everything that you see behind us in your beautiful display is something that we would be telling the public about. The vast array of cultural, historic, and recreational opportunities, not only for Morris County residents, but for vi visitors and business travelers. Do you have any idea... Um how many visitors come to Morris County each year? We do. In fact, we assiduously um, monitor that, and for the last, oh, I would say over 10 years, we've been looking at metrics so that we can absolutely answer that question. So in 2012, we actually had over 4,000 uh, walk-in visitors to the center, and on top of that, we had 2,500 approximate uh, calls to the center. Now, then you include the 65,000 people who use our web services, and we're talking about almost 75,000 people who are serviced annually by the Morris County Tourism Bureau. Now, we hear um, from time to time that tourism is a major part of New Jersey's economy. Just how important is tourism to New Jersey? It actually is one of the most important industries to the state. And I think, of course, because of Hurricane Sandy, a lot of attention has been focused on the importance of tourism to the state. Last year, we actually saw, thankfully, an increase in tourism expenditures, actually to $38 billion dollars. Before that, we had seen a decrease because of the recession, and so it was wonderful that this year's news actually sh sh showed yeah. um, an increase back to uh, pre-recession levels. How does Morris County figure into those numbers? What is the economic impact for Morris County because of tourism? We estimate, and we actually look at figures given to us through um, the state of New Jersey's mm -hmm. Division of Travel and Tourism, but again, last year, the numbers were $1.8 billion. We saw a 3.9 increase. The previous year, we actually had seen a 7.2% increase. So for Morris County, since I've been the executive director and we started tracking, as I said, mm -hmm. we've seen a steady increase in our economic power um, through tourism mm -hmm. for the county. Is it the counties, and you alluded to, to that uh, this a, a couple of minutes ago, is it the county's rich history that draws people to Morris County? Yes, I would say it's a combination of factors. Certainly the fact that we have a lot of business travel that fills our hotel rooms, mm -hmm. usually Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And then you couple that with strong interest in our historic and cultural assets. And those factors combined help support this robust tourism uh, economic number. There's also added into that food, beverage, and shopping, because that's what tourists like to do. That's what businessmen like to do. They go to restaurants, and that all together factors into how we uh, measure tourism impact. Now, when people come to Morris County, it would be very helpful if there was an easy way for them to find what they are looking for. The Morris County Tourism Bureau is assisting in that effort mm -hmm. uh, by coming up and developing a what is known as a wayfinding system. Now, generally speaking, yes. what is a wayfinding system? A wayfinding system is a, is a system of very, very specifically placed directional vehicular signage as well as pedestrian signage that helps not only give an area, Morris County for example, a sense of place, a sense of pride because it's something that's very visual, mm -hmm. but it also helps direct people get from point A 
to point B. And so we are very interested in seeing our directional vehicular wayfinding system um, implemented because I think it not only designates that this area is very worthy and there are many things to see, but it actually helps facilitate. Even though people have GP, uh, GPS, many, many times people will say, you know, I got sent here and turned yeah. around and yeah. messed up. But vehicular and pedestrian signage actually delivers. It promises you that if you want to get to the Morris County Courthouse, for example, and you're on uh, 287, it will promise that it will get you there. Okay, so now, specifically, what are we doing here in Morris County in terms of the wayfinding system and pedestrian signage and vehicular signage? Well, we studied the program for, for almost two years. We wrote a grant to give us a shovel-ready program. And out of that program, we recognized that we could only implement a very small part of the program because the price tag is rather large. Mm -hmm. But it's, you know, this is something we believe is marketing and signage that will last decade after decade after decade. So what we did is we actually took out of the, the master plan a very small area, a pilot area, so that we could not only demonstrate how important and how um, useful the program was, and so recently we, imp we actually um, installed 22 vehicular signs and two pedestrian kiosks so that people could become more acquainted with the system. You know, it's one thing showing it to you on paper. Mm -hmm. It's a whole different uh, story when you can touch it, you can feel it, you can see it. And so that's where we are now. 22 vehicular signs installed in a very, very small, comprehensive pilot area. Uh, the one uh, pedestrian kiosk is in uh, uh, the county's Pocket Park on Washington Street in Morristown. Where is yes. the second one? The located? second one is at Menin Arena. And Menin Arena is actually within the pilot area. Okay. The, the, the pilot area is basically a triangle that begins at Menin Arena on one end down to the Freeland Heisen Arboretum and then as far uh, of on um, the angle of mm -hmm. the triangle down to Acorn Hall and the National Park. Okay. So that area is what is, we have highlighted. Okay. Now, the Morris County Tourism Bureau has been uh, has been promoting a number of events over the years and in particular 2013 and 2014 uh, billed as uh, I believe uh, events of historic proportion. That's right. Uh, one of them was Revolutionary Times, July 4th in Morristown, as the town celebrated its rich history uh, in the American Revolution. In September, there is the Grand Fondo, New Jersey, which is a massive uh, bicycling event. Then there is Pro Football Super Bowl. Now, that is in February of 2014. It is... Um, in East Rutherford, New Jersey, not here in Morris County. So my question to you, Leslie Bensley, is why and how is the Tourism Bureau involved in Super Bowl activities? Well, that's a good question, and thank you for asking. We're very excited about events of historic proportion. And in fact, yes, the Super Bowl um, is coming to New Jersey, which in and of itself is a great feat. And why we're involved is because the AFC team will be practicing at the Jets facility in Morris County, in Florham Park. And if you think of East Rutherford as being the bullseye and concentric circles around East Rutherford, there's an impact zone, you know, as people come to our area. They're expecting over 150,000 people um, visiting and maybe up to 400,000 people, including the press and all the folks that follow their teams to be in our area. Therefore, we in Morris County are within that impact zone. We call it Zone 4, and the Morris County Tourism Bureau is actually the zone captain for our area. And what we're trying to do is to work with the AFC and the host committee and the NFL mm -hmm. 
to um, create excitement about what is very historic, this game, this first outdoor football game in decades and decades, and also to highlight locally that we're a participant by virtue of one of the teams practicing in our area. So at the Morristown Festival on the Green this September, we will be activating our kickoff uh, trying to create excitement for what will be beginning in September all the way to February 2nd. We hope a very, very exciting time and a time where people can be involved. And we know that lots of people care about football. So um, be sure to visit our website where we're going to be having sweepstakes and all mm -hmm. sorts of other uh, projects to, you know, stroke those fires. <laughs> and we're going to be giving you a telephone number and the website for the Tourism Bureau in just a couple of minutes. Uh, getting back to the Tourism Bureau, the relationship between the Tourism Bureau and the county government, yes, uh, in particular the Morris County Freeholders, what has that relationship been over the years and, and how does that relationship con uh, continue? Well, it has been the most profoundly strong and consistent relationship that we have had. In fact, we're housed within a county building on Court Street. I would say that the freeholders are our strongest advocate, and not only are they demonstrative of that through a financial commitment, but also through a very high level of civic uh, support and certainly through uh, programs like this and we have a wonderful relationship with every level of uh, the county government from the police to the Office of Public Information. So we're entirely uh, grateful and continue to thank them for their support. Leslie, I'm going to give uh, our viewers some uh, contact information for mm -hmm. the Tourism Bureau. If they want to learn more about the many events uh, of historic proportion that the Tourism Bureau is promoting, you can find the Tourism Bureau at 6 Court Street in Morristown. You can call them at 973-631-5151. And please visit the website because you'll get an awful lot of information online at morristourism.org. Leslie Bensley, thank you very much for being with us today. Thank you so much, Joe. Now, if you have a question about Morris County government that you would like to have answered, you can call the Morris County Freeholders Office at 973-285-6010. Please visit the county government's website, morriscountynj.gov. Once you're there, sign up for the county's electronic newsletter to stay up to date with county government news. Also, while you're there, you can uh, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, view past programs and informational videos on YouTube, browse our document library on Scribd, and check out some photos from various county events on Flickr. I'm Joe Garifo. Thank you very much for being with us. Tune in again next week at this time for another edition of Focus on Morris County.